Welcome back to the sweatshop, boys and girls. Today we are working on a 2013 Nissan Altima. The reason why we are working on the Nissan is because the lower control arm has decided to separate. There you go, boys and girls. There is our issue. Our bushing here has separated from the lower control arm, which of course can be very scary if it happens at speed. Fortunately, Nissan sells this part for a decent price, especially up here in Canada. Anyhow, this thing wasn't very expensive from our local dealership here, and we were able to get one next day. So it appears to be possibly a common issue. I haven't done one of these yet because I don't maintain too many Nissans. In my opinion, it just looks Looks like poor design or manufacturing process because as you can see here the metal is still thick enough to the point where it wouldn't have separated and it's not completely rotted through so the Canadian winter can't be blamed as the culprit I think it's poor design anyhow that's enough rambling on let's get started with the repair now before we get started with today's video do me a favor and hit that subscribe button check out some of my artist skills there not bad, right? At least he has two eyes and something that resembles a face. Of course, your first step is going to be to remove your rim and tire. Your next step is going to be to make sure that you, of course, have the car up in the air nice and secure on jack stands if you're doing this in the driveway. Then go ahead and get a nice can of WD-40 and spray down all of these nuts. Anything that you're going to touch, you want to spray down on the nut side so that everything comes apart nicely and you don't cry yourself to sleep at night. The next step before you get out your heavy Yugga Dugga gun is to get your small one impact driver. Get a 10 millimeter and remove the bolts here, here, and here. Also, you should employ the use of eyeglasses because nobody likes sand in their eyes. Maybe some WD-40 would have helped. That and a non-dead battery. Uh, this segment is for all you mechanics out there. Don't you just love when you're working on a car and you're underneath a stupid thing and you're trying to take off a part as you just saw me do? And of course, some of the dirt crap from this part here falls into your shoe. Usually it is a spiky, jagged rock that has the same sort of sharpness as an X-Acto knife. And of course it falls right into the middle of your foot where you step down on it and scream like a little girl. God, the joys of being an auto mechanic. The next step for us is to remove whatever crap you have in your boots. Why won't it come out, you son of a bitch? I had success off camera. Exhibit A, boys and girls, the joys of being an auto mechanic. Now, grab an 18 millimeter wrench and a shit ton of willpower and crank these two guys here loose. Now, let's move the camera and show you how to loosen up the other bolts, boys and girls. Now get this guy here, it's also 18 mil. Once you get the nut loose, what you want to do is take your wrench Place it on the bolt side and just see if it's loose. If it is loose, it is a good sign. It means you're not going to be crying later on. Now go ahead, grab a 21 mil wrench, place it on the bolt on the back here. Grab a 21 mil flex socket and hammer this guy out. Now this guy here is a toe adjustment. So take the parts off by hand and do not lose them. Then on the opposite side, you'll have the washer there. Don't lose it. Just tap it out nice and light. If you damage this bolt, it won't be a good day. Because of course they are expensive and usually not in stock. Get a punch and tap it the rest of the way through. And uh, just to leave the punch in there because it looks like a pain in the ass to get out right now. So let's work on getting the rest of the control arm separated. Your next step is going to be to get this 
link detached from the controller. What you need to do is grab this portion here with a vice grip because I don't feel any slotted portion where we can fit a wrench over. There probably is one there. Unfortunately, the salt has claimed that slot if it was there to begin with. So what you need to do is grab a vice grip that will fit between the piece of rubber and steel without damaging the rubber. Go ahead and clamp down as hard as you can. Now when I say hard, I mean you know that you've clamped down enough force on this thing when you feel like you're about to pass out and it clicks. When the vice grip clicks and the blood starts to come back into your head and you feel normal about five seconds give or take after that pressure that you put on yourself you've put enough pressure god damn it god god damn ah, fuck oh god yeah when you feel that uh massive uh relief of pressure in your brain get a 16 mil flex socket and then hammer this nut off Remember, boys and girls, if you don't feel dizzy to the point where you're going to pass out when applying pressure on the vice grip, you haven't put enough pressure and that stupid thing will spin. Of course, if you're in Florida, you can blow on the nut and it'll fall right out of place because there's no rust tight. 16 mil. Of course this doesn't work. Let's get an extension so that we can get that stupid thing off. See what I mean, boys and girls? Remember, you gotta feel like you're gonna pass out and you'll be good to go with the vice grip. Also, this thing is extremely hot, so don't touch it with your hands after impacting it like that. God damn. Now your next step is to remove the vice grip, but here's some advice, boys and girls. Do not get your finger or any portion of you in front of this when you try to release it. Get another pliers or vice grip and just clamp down on this. If you have your hands in this portion here, in this section here, you'll probably get hurt pretty good because you've put a lot of pressure on this so be cautious and then as you clamp down on this guy here just push up on this one slowly yeah now back in the front here get your 18 mil ratchet wrench and just ratchet this one off you can get in here with a chrome flex socket but why bother now with your Ugga Dugga gun go ahead and shoot this guy off now we're almost ready we've got one more bolt to get rid of but as you can see here there is a spring there is barely any pressure left on this spring but i'm not psychic and i don't know how much pressure is actually there and i don't want to find out the hard way because no one likes getting hit in the face with a spring or dying so what i'm going to do is employ the use of one of these death traps here this thing here is one of the worst tools for compressing springs but it is a necessary tool when you have situations like this so what you want to do and look for if you are purchasing a set of these is make sure it has this little lock thing it does make it cumbersome and a bit of a pain in the ass to get on the spring sometimes but it could potentially save your life now what you want to do is just slide this guy into an area where we can actually work it like so maybe I should adjust this instead of wasting all this film time I'll be back boys and girls. That's the setup that I have here. Make sure if you have one that has the locks, utilize them. Go ahead and get the appropriate socket for your tool and ratchet this thing up. We're using a ratchet wrench. For your safety and others who may be around you uh, when doing this sort of job, do not impact this type of tool with an impact wrench because these usually gall up and then they break. And when they break, the tension that is stored in the spring or the pressure will come at you in a very dangerous and unsettling manner. Okay, begin ratcheting, boys and girls.
All we're trying to do is basically take the pressure off of the lower control arm so that when we do pull this bolt out, it doesn't push it way down rapidly. What you want to do is make sure you can twist it sort of freely back and forth like this, or you see the spring separate from the top there. That's how you know you're good to go. Now there is two ways that we know now that we have no pressure on the lower control arm. We can twist the spring back and forth like this relatively easily, and we can pull this guy out over here and this thing hasn't shot off of the car. So we're good to go. Now we can go ahead and pull that last remaining bolt out. Get your 18 mil wrench to hold the bolt side of the fastener and then go ahead and get your 18 mil flex socket and fire away. Get your hammer and tap. Then use a punch to finish it off. Don't hammer your hand like I just did. Now what you wanna do before you pull the punch out of place is to make sure that you're tension free. Even though it's very little tension, it could be enough to still hurt you. So what you wanna do is, again, wiggle this guy. We have a little bit of tension somehow, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Now we seem like we're almost there, so what I'm going to do now is push the control arm up by hand and then try to force the stabilizer link out. Yeah, that's not gonna fucking happen. <laughs> yeah, boys and girls, I'm not Hercules. Now, I'm no Mark Henry, so of course, instead of trying to be a strong man, go ahead and utilize the stuff that you have around you. I'm gonna use a stand. What you can do is employ the use of a jack. Of course, if you are using a jack and you're doing this on jack stands, be aware of your vehicle and whether it's going to come off or you're taking pressure off of the jack stands because that could be a potentially dangerous situation. Now go ahead and crank this guy up to take some pressure off so you can pull that link out. If you're struggling like me to get the stupid thing separated, it's because this piece of junk is too far towards the outside of the car. So what we need to do is just pry it back a bit somehow in towards the vehicle and that should take care of our issue yeah there we go then just wiggle it out of the way like so thank god that's in frame and now we can begin lowering this thing down nice and slowly if you work as a model i suggest employing the use of a face shield if you ugly like me, well, it don't matter. Once you see the tension come off of the control arm, what you want to do is now take your pry bar and stick it between the front portion of this control arm here and begin to separate the back half. Well, that doesn't look like it's gonna come apart nicely. What you'll need to do essentially is just wiggle it back and forth. Let's see if I can get this guy out here without having to take all this bullshit out. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. Okay, let's backtrack, boys and girls. We're gonna have to do one more step. So, in order for us to slide this portion back and off of the car, what we're going to need to do is also release this 18 millimeter bolt on the front control arm here. Get an 18 millimeter wrench to hold the bolt and a deep socket to fit over the nut. Course, hammer it out. Use the wrench to check and see if the bolt is loose. Looks like we're having a good day. Use your hammer to tap out the bolt. Get a short punch. Now what we need to do is employ the use of a pry bar and separate this portion of the spindle here and here from both of these control arms so we can get the rear portion of this lower control arm set up out of the way. Remember, do this slowly and cautiously because we don't know how much pressure may be on that spring and lower control arm assembly. 
Oh my god, this is gonna be fun. With this back bushing here, we're going to employ the use of two pry bars, one on the top and one on the bottom. We're essentially going to have the lower control arm give birth to the spindle bushing by prying up and down on the top and bottom of this stupid thing. Come on, you piece of junk. And then every once in a while, you're going to touch this back part here. That there will really help the process of getting this stupid thing off the car. We're almost there, boys and girls, I promise. Oh, easy does it. Piece of junk. I don't quite understand the process of Nissan putting such overly complicated suspension on a car that is utterly useless with its CVT. Surprisingly enough, the rest of the car is also starting to turn out to be useless. At 99,000 kilometers, we are replacing a control arm. So that speaks to the quality of this particular junker. Not the worst of cars out there, but definitely not the best. Okay. Okay. Now you can see that it popped. Of course, it wasn't very violent, which is exactly what we want, but the spring had some tension. So now with these two guys separated from the spindle here, what we can do is now commence with prying in this section here to separate it and push it completely off of the vehicle. Before you do that, check the tension or whatever pressure may be on the spring. There still is a little bit, very little in comparison to what it was before, but keep the stand there for safety and be cautious. Grab hold of the spring from where it is compressed and then begin prying this guy out. There we go. Let go, junker. Once it is basically separated, you can go ahead and release the tension off of the stand and remove the spring at the same time. Okay. Okay, there we go. That's how it's done, boys and girls. Couple of things to note here. Make sure that when you pull your spring off, that little rubber perch that sits in the control arm is either on the control arm or on your spring. Make sure you remove it if it's on your control arm. Make sure the top perch doesn't fall out of place or alignment. And now go ahead and take your old piece of junk control arm and compare it to the new one. Once you have compared your control arm and you're satisfied that you have the right one, check the link and make sure that it is still in good condition. Once you do that, Go ahead, take the appropriate tap. This particular one is an M10 by 125 pitch. Thread it on. Get your handy dandy vice grip. Clamp this down. You don't have to clamp it down as tight. It is or looks like it was a hex at some point, but it's all rotted away, so we're gonna have to use the vice grip. Then chase the threads on the bolt. That process there, boys and girls, is voluntary, but it will prevent an aneurysm. Of course, you should know by now, if you've watched my videos, that it is the time to take your anti-seize out and douse this thing with it. Oh yeah. Give it a nice, thick, healthy dose. Not too thick now. Now we can begin the process of wiggling everything back together. What I'm going to do is try and fit the front here into those two bushings slightly and then bend the control arm down in order to put the spring in. Let's, uh, let's do that. Now grab your spring, of course, and make sure that you are aware of these markings here and there. Make sure you line them up correctly and then Put it back together as you found it. Put the bottom portion of the spring in first and then the top. Okay, that didn't work. Control arm's still in there. It hasn't fallen out of the car yet, so that's good. Now let's start compressing this guy here. Just a bit. Ugh. Okay, 
Now, of course, it'd be much easier if you had a helper. I don't, so yeah. Kind of wrestle with it until you get it into place. Oh, the controller is way out of fucking whack here. Okay, let's just leave this contraption like this. I'm going to get another stand to help me uh, adjust it. Now, of course, this is a really cumbersome process. Essentially, what I've done is sneak this other stand on the back portion of the control arm here. Now, as we push the control arm up in order to line up the front two pieces of the control arm with that other portion there of the suspension, what we want to do is be aware of where our spring is. You need to make sure that it's going to line up properly the way it came out of the vehicle, because otherwise you're gonna get these annoying stupid sounds. So, let's go ahead and put this wonderfully designed product together. So I've got the two front portions there in. I'm going to see if I can catch a bolt uh, just to make sure it's secure. And then we can actually start forcing it up from here. So we are nowhere near where we can actually put in a bolt. What I'm going to do now is separate the outermost stand and put it in the back here so that we can force this together. Ah, come on, don't fall out on me, you prick. Yeah, this is definitely one where you would benefit from having a few more people with you. Now, on this bottom portion here of the perch, there is a little tab here that has to line up with a hole on the actual lower control arm. So, make sure you line that up. Okay, boys and girls, I'm gonna think about some shit and I'll see you back soon. Okay, boys and girls, so we have re-strategized. We are now employing the use of three stands in order to wiggle this stupid thing into place. So, we're gonna just wing it and push up on either stand as needed to get this thing into place. So yeah, take your time, be careful and don't get smacked by the springer control arm. Let's line up the spring. It's lined up in the fucking top, but not on the front there. Okay, we've re-strategized again for the third time. <laughs> Essentially, what I've done is lined up the perch because I wasn't able to twist this goddamn thing. I wasn't able to twist this thing under load, so now I'm going to continue to force it up slowly and just wiggle it in there. Wish me luck, boys and girls. So to this point, we have this portion here of the control arm that is sticking through this piece of the suspension. We're going to use this bolt here to secure it so that it doesn't come flying out at us. Once that is secure, I'm going to work on trying to line this guy up here and then we'll sandwich these guys together and then work on the two bushings in the back. Again, just take your time and be careful because it's a stressful, dangerous job. Okay, boys and girls, so to this point, what I have done is force the control arm up as much as I can to get this guy aligned, and then it was slightly this way, so I bashed it with a rubber mallet, and now this one is lined up. Now, what I'm going to do is employ the use of my 18 millimeter ratchet wrench in order to pull this bolt tight against this control arm and sandwich these two guys together. Unfortunately, boys and girls, when drawing the lower control arm together with this front portion of the suspension, you're going to bottom out. So what I've done is I've taken the other lower control arm bolt and I have slid this nut over it that is bigger so that it will build up the bolt so to speak and then thread it in and that way it will pull this closer together. Now you can see that it has drawn the control arm in just a bit. So what I'm going to do now is pull this front bolt out and repeat the process by finding another nut such as this to draw it in. So I ended up doing the same thing and then once I got the bushing to clear that little nub on the control arm, what I did was just take my mallet and tap this guy into place. After that, as you can see, I took a large jaw vice grip and just clamped the two pieces together. And now I'm going to take this guy here and thread it in. Then what we'll do is once we get this guy a bit snug is take the original equipment bolt and put it back in this hole here. Just snug it up for now. Make sure that you have the back in to the bushing before you remove the bolt. Once you make sure of that, go ahead and remove it. Should be nice and easy. Put the original bolt back in, of course.
Okay, with that done, now what we can do is put the back end of the control arm into place. Yeah, after doing the job myself, I definitely don't think it's something that's going to be easy to do in the driveway. You'll probably want to rip your face off if you attempt this in the driveway. Anyhow, with that being said, you can go ahead and remove this front stand. With that out of the way, now you only have two variables that are left. We're going to leave the stabilizer link for last. What we need to get out of the way is this portion here or this portion here. This guy here looks a lot easier for me to get into position so I'm gonna go ahead and tackle this toe adjustment bolt first also the washer is affixed to the bolt so you don't have to worry about losing that take your time with driving up the lower control arm it is still dangerous because you are putting more and more pressure on the spring so take your time Remember that this portion with the hole is supposed to be down towards the floor. Slide in the back portion once you get this side of it lined up and then you can force the control arm up so that the bushing will twist. It's a, it's a little bit too much pressure for my liking. Well, let's leave that. Now that we have that bolt in position, what we'll do is try to adjust on the outside of the lower control arm to see if it'll make our lives a little bit easier with getting that hole to line up. Now our goal is to yank on the spindle to get it to go into this section here. Uh, just be careful and make sure you don't get your hand snagged or caught by anything. Let's get a primer. It's a little bit more challenging for me because it's not at a normal working height because I'm trying to film this for you guys out there. You'll just be able to lift it and put it into position. I can't because it's too high. I'll just wiggle it into place nice and easily. Now with it in this position where it's just past the edge of the control arm, what you can do is force the stand up, compressing the spring some more, sending the control arm up. With the control arm slightly elevated in this position here, what you can do now is put some more pressure on this guy here to see if you can get it to go into position. Oh, we're lifting up on the back here. We're almost there, so we're gonna use a little bit of uh, rubber persuasion. Not quite enough. We'll tap the bushing a little bit with a pry bar just to see if it's not stuck inside the cross member. Did that do it? No, it did not. Well, boys and girls, just keep doing it nice and slowly. Oh, that's always fun when the back of your car starts to fucking jiggle because you've taken all the pressure off of it. So, as you can see, I have got the bolt through to the other side. How I did that was by adjusting this guy here a bit more. But when pushing this portion of the car up, it pushed the whole car up and off the hoist, which was quite dangerous. So, what I needed to do was push the car in the opposite direction by employing the use of a stand in the front of the car over here. I used the stand by pushing up on the utmost front portion of the subframe that I could find and that is what got me to push the bolt through. Now of course with the bolt in position you can go ahead and remove your stand. Now what I need to do because my stand is almost at its limit is readjust. So I've taken another stand and put it in the front of the control arm. Now we can go ahead and readjust. Okay let's go ahead and finish this thing off. Now just send it up as much as you can. Take your pry bar and adjust as needed. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Give me back my pry bar, you fucking junker. Okay, wiggle it in there, boys and girls. Slowly. Do we have enough slack? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <sighs> okay, that was a little bit too much pressure, boys and girls. So now we'll have to pry it back out to line up as a hole. Oh, don't don't hit the camera in case you're recording. 
Muster up all the willpower that you can and sneak the last remaining bolts back in. If you mix them up, fear not, they are the same in terms of length. Oh, before you put them in, put some anti-seize on this crap. After you've applied your anti-seize, go ahead and wiggle the bolts home. Uh, fuck, scratch that. Get a pry bar. After you've applied your anti-seize, get your pry bar to assist you with doing this job and slide your bolts home. Why don't you want to go home? What's your problem? There we go. Doesn't that feel good? Okay. With both bolts in place, go ahead and put your nuts on. Now to this point, I have run up all the bolts and snug them up slightly. The suspension is still compressed with the stand at what would be the normal ride height for this vehicle. So now we are in a position where we can go ahead and torque all of our fasteners. We're gonna go ahead firstly and torque these two fasteners here to 82 foot-pounds. These ones can be torqued without the suspension loaded up. Now with the two outer bolts here, this nut here and the nut that's invisible over here, you're going to torque them to 87 foot-pounds a piece. Remember that these two nuts here have to be torqued while the suspension is loaded up. Otherwise, you will wear out your bushings prematurely. When torquing them, make sure you employ the use of a wrench to hold the bolt so that you know for sure you're actually getting the correct torque. Now before you go ahead and remove your stand, the last bolt that you have to torque at ride height is this one here, your toe adjustment bolt. Now, the key to success with this one here is trying to get it back as close to the same position that you took it off in before you take it for an alignment. That way, you're not gonna burn through your tires very quickly. So, get a wrench, line up the bolt as best you can to what it was prior to you taking it off. And then go ahead and torque this thing to 108 foot-pounds. Make sure that you hold the bolt stationary while torquing the nut. Now we can go ahead and remove the stand finally. Okay, with that guy out of the way, Take a break, you deserve it. After your break, get your 24 millimeter or whatever the appropriate size is for your spring compressor tool and take this stupid contraption out. <sighs> now pull these locks and Remove this stupid thing. We're almost there, boys and girls, I promise. One of the last things you have to do is slip that stupid link back into place. Nissan and their engineering team could not find a better place for this, so they had to stick it in the most pain in the ass place possible. What will aid you in the process of getting this thing back into the hole is a pry bar. Ah, you... There we go. Pry it into place, then push it back home like so, grab the bolt, and then we will get our favorite tool, your vice grip. Slide the nut on first, of course. These are usually of the locking type, which uh, is nice and fun, said no one ever. Okay, go get your vice grip. Sneak your vice grip in there without hitting the camera, and then you can loosen it off a bit because you've tapped it. Uh, if you haven't, well then, squeeze! <sighs> Grab your extension and 16 millimeter bolt on a small, weak ugga dugga gun and hammer this stupid thing back into place, boys and girls. That's not working. That's not working, there we go. If you're wondering the route that I took to get this thing in place, meaning the socket and extension, uh, I'll show you. 
There you go, boys and girls. Check it out. This is the pleasure of being an auto mechanic. As you can see, it is not very pleasurable at all. And uh, if you are thinking of having a professional mechanic do this job, don't ever say to him that, oh, it's just a few bolts, man. It's not that hard. Because he'll probably want to kick you down a flight of stairs. Anyhow, if you're doing this yourself, you will understand the pain that I am going through currently. I hope to God that you live somewhere nice and sunny where there is no rust tight to hinder you. Yeah. Good luck out there, boys and girls. You're almost there, boys and girls. Just torque this thing to 32 foot-pounds. Now, with all the hard stuff out of the way, go ahead and chase these bolt holes here so that you don't break them when installing them. In case you're wondering, the tap that is needed is an M6 by one millimeter pitch. Don't forget to anti-seize the bolts as well as chase them and then go ahead and install everything back on the car. If you're wondering what the torque is for those bolts, the torque is uh, don't break them. Of course, before you take it off of the hoist or jack, what you want to do is check the other side control arm to make sure that you don't end up with this problem on the side of the road. Now, just before you go ahead and put your wheel on, remember to apply some anti-seize or some white lithium grease. Remember, boys and girls, for proper application, shake well. And you should probably wear a mask. Um, okay. Now go ahead, put your wheel back on. Eh! Always thread your nuts up by hand. If you do it by machine, it could be a very bad day. Then use a non-high torque Hagadaga machine to run them up. And torque them to 83 foot-pounds. Well, boys and girls, now all the fun physical stuff is done. The only thing that is left is to take the vehicle for a test drive to make sure that you have fixed the issue and that there's no funny sounds and your spring is in the normal position. Once everything is A-OK, -okay, go ahead and take this thing for a four-wheel alignment. That's all she wrote for the Ultima, boys and girls. All that's left to do now is like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one. So unless you're closely looking at it, well, you don't even have to look closely at it. Because the lower control arm has let go. That was a stupid shot. And there is some cracking and tearing there, which indicates that there was some separation. It's too much rambling. What to do, my friends? I don't know why I'm rambling on so much today. Jesus Christ. Uh, I think it was 190 bucks or something. You know, I'm not going to tell you about the price because I don't remember it right now. Jimmy, it's too long. And you're trying to take off a part like is you... Next step, try to separate this with the vice grip in place. That's not going to happen. Okay, next step, remove your vice grip. God damn it. Okay, here's some advice. Now just imagine if your hand was there. All we're trying to do essentially is take the slack off of the spring. What? We're trying to create slack. Damn it. Now go ahead and start to crank this guy up. Oh, don't kick the camera. Oh, come off you fucking pile of shit. Why the fuck? 18 mil wrench and flex socket. Oh, it's too fucking short, damn it. I gotta get a fucking deep one. What we'll need to do is pull the lower portion of the control arm out. Or, sorry, that's not a control arm, that is a spindle. Well, at least the fastener wasn't rusted. The bushing is rusted to fuck though. Make sure this guy, oh, well, that should be in frame, damn it. Once you've compared the control arm and you're satisfied that you have the right one, go ahead, check the condition of the link to make sure that it isn't still Go ahead and check your link to make sure that it isn't... Fuck. <sighs> Once you have compared your control arm and you're satisfied that you got the right one, make sure that you have... Oh, God damn. Now you should know by now that if you've watched my... Now you should know... Ah, fuck. Now we can bring... I mean... Oopsies. Spring. Come on, don't... Don't be a dick, Nissan. Ah, uh, you fucking pile of shit, Kurt. Fuck you. Under road, I did. Are you an engineer? Are you? Hmm, that's good. Okay, so to this point, I have this section or this protruding piece on the new control arm that will. 
For fuck's sakes, man. Oh, you fucking pile of shit. Oh, Nissan. Fucking pile of shit. On this portion of the car, the back portion of the car, pushing the back completely off and up off. So, as you can see, as you can see, I'm not Russian, dude. <clears throat> So, as you can see, I have gotten the whole... Oh, man. I'm done. I'm tired. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here and go home. Yeah. I'm gonna have to readjust. Oh, fuck. Okay, boys and girls. Muster up all the willpower that you can. And now put the... Oh, you fucking piece of shit camera. You think it's easy making YouTube videos, boys and girls? Huh? Let me tell you. It is not. Okay. Bring back professional Jimmy now. With both... With both bolts, you don't have a hammer that With bolts, ah, fuck! To this point, I have run all the bolts up back to their, ah, for fuck's sakes, man. This is gonna be long. To this point, I have. Now, lastly, before you take the stand out, you need to torque your inside bolt or your toe adjustment bolt. Built. Now, lastly, before you go ahead and take your stand off of the vehicle. Yeah. Now, lastly, before you go ahead and remove your stand, what you want to do is torque your inside toe adjustment bolt. This one requires 111 foot pounds. I don't know if that's the truth. Let's go and see. No, it's not. Fuck. Let's just start over. Now, before you go ahead and remove your stand, you have to have the get get the get get that pig. The fuck am I saying? Oh god damn it! God damn it! Oh fuck you! Oh god! Why? Why God? Why? You know what, boys and girls? Just leave the vice grip on there. Let it be part of the car forever and ever. Till death do they part. Now go ahead and put your wheel back on. <laughs> sounds like it's... Fuck. That doesn't sound right. <laughs> then, you have to take it for a four-wheel drive. What <laughs> the fuck?